Today's the day we look at the next gen stats and look at the trends for the running backs. Those running backs who you're looking at off the waiver wire, those running backs you might be able to buy low on, those running backs you just need a little bit of confirmation bias on what happened on Sunday. It's going to be here right now. But before we dig in, you need to click that subscribe button right now because tomorrow we're going hot and heavy on the waiver wire we're going to have a video out talking about 20 or more wide receivers another video out talking about 20 or more running backs the next day more waiver wire and then on the end of the week we're always using videos to help you set your lineups click that button stop missing out rick flair's watching you don't disappoint him but we got to start things off with the tank with the tank back to back games leading the Jaguars in rushing yards he's looking good he's looking powerful and now we got a question of him and Travis Etienne coaches do not want to answer that in the media matter of fact they're saying they're rolling Etienne but they will show their hand in game as things progress but Tank Bigsby has the Bears next week on the road I don't think it matters he's a good handcuff He's getting volume. Bye weeks are going to happen. You're going to need running backs like this who are getting enough touches that could cross the goal line on any given Sunday. Tank Bigsby is that guy to have on the back end of your bench nonetheless. Trey Sermon. So we picked him up off waivers last week, and we knew touches were going to be there, but we didn't know what was going to happen with those touches. And he was a running back, like I said in his unique video. I'm not in love with the talent, but you got to chase touches. When you got to chase touches, and he got you the touches, and he turned them into fancy production. We got the touchdown. He also saw six targets in this matchup, and this helped you out in fantasy football. Sometimes a lesser running back, all they need is just touches and some daylight, some goal line looks, a couple targets, and you're good to go. And that's what Trey Sermon did. Now, Jonathan Taylor's out again. You're doing the same thing, and you're hoping for the best against Tennessee. That's what we're looking at. Trey Sermon, though, getting the work. Tyrone Tracy went off. And this guy's got a lot of pop in the step. He's very explosive. He's also good in the passing game. Hopefully the Giants explore that a little bit more. But he's a very explosive runner. Gives a more dynamic pop to this offense. And I look for him to carve out a larger role going forward. I don't care if Singletary comes back. I think he needs to be stashed. I thought he should have been stashed all along. He was in almost all the waiver wire videos. Most of them leading up to this point. Because of the impact with his speed and we were looking at him all training camp long because he was a running back we thought that could potentially steal the job during training camp Devin Singletary very reliable running back but does not have the upside to explode with that speed Tyron Tracy looks fresh he looks good he's an upside play as well a guy that needs to be stashed going forward Jalen Wright has a bye week next week, but he's explosive. They're starting to use him more. Agents hurt. The thing about him on the waiver wire, he is a stash play with immense upside. I kind of look at him with the 42 to Keaton Mitchell, but not as talented, not as good when it comes to between the tackles, vision, patience, all the finer nuances. But Jalen Wright has that home run hitting speed. He has the upside to be kind of like the Will Fuller or like a Rashid Shaheed of the running back position where if you're getting carries with this guy, there's going to be some get weeks where he doesn't do anything, but there's going to be a lot of upside weeks as well, like maybe one hour before games where he goes off due to a crease opening up and him busting out long gains. Jalen Wright's a guy that needs stashed again. We were stashing him at the start of the season, then Tua went down, and then we're like, ah, these Dolphins. And now we're getting back there because we're starting to get opportunities. He's got a lot of upside. He's got speed to burn, 4-3 speed with size. They're probably going to start using these running backs a little bit more. They can't bang up this team anymore. Jalen Wright's got some work to do here, and we're going to see him get more work in the back half of the season as they try to explore what they have in Jalen Wright before we go into 2025. Ty Chandler has a bye week next week, but we've been saying to stash him all along, especially you got Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones went down with the injury. We do not know how long he's going to be out. Ty Chandler has speed to burn. Much like Jalen Wright, he can score anywhere on the field. We saw that last year. He had some runs called back last year. More people would be on to him if that didn't happen. But he can be very productive in this offense. This offense is moving to football. He's a stash play nonetheless, whether or not... 
he comes back. If Aaron Jones comes back, he's still a stash play because he always has been. You're just picking your stashes because it all depends on if the starter goes down. But we got a bye week. You don't really need him for next week. But again, when you're looking at what he's doing here on the field, getting carries, getting opportunity, they're trying to get him in space on the edge. You're seeing it right there. He'll probably get a little bit more work in the pass game when the game script calls for it. That 4-3 speed, that home run hitting upside is always going to be there with Ty Chandler when he's getting touches and opportunity. Chase Brown is getting more touches and opportunity. He might be on waivers. He might not. A lot of people dropped him earlier in the season. A lot of people have been holding tight. The Bengals know there's more upside per carry with this guy due to the home run hitting potential. But also Zach Moss is very dependable, especially up the gut and pass protection. So you got the best of both worlds here with the running backs. He's very explosive in the passing game. You get him on the flat, up the gut, around the corner as well. Chase Brown is getting more work. He needs roster. He should be roster. Shouldn't have been dropped in the first place. But he has been getting dropped in some leagues. He's a guy to be rostered, and you play with him with your lineups once these injuries and bye weeks become more prevalent. Rico Dowdle had his game. He got his opportunity. He got his moment. We're seeing the touches increase by the week. 11 carries in week 4, 20 in week 5, a little bit more work in the passing game, and we got that touchdown against the Steelers. We got Detroit next week. He's getting work since he's getting work. He should be rostered and use him to chase the workload and hopefully it lands with fantasy points. Rashad White and Bucky Irvin, both of them. Hey, Bucky Irvin did not get a chart from Next Gen Stats, so I don't have a chart for him. But when you're looking at these two running backs, they're splitting the workload dead evenly. Bucky Irvin fumbled and was back in a few plays later, so they like him. Bucky Irvin was the hot hand, but Rashad White has the speed to do what that green line did and go off he has that potential they like him he's good in the passing game they are going to be a headache that is what the trends are saying they're going to be a headache off and on until one emerges and is undeniable or one gets hurt Brees hall could be a big buy for you the schedule's not super promising here in the next few weeks but it gets work we know how good he is he's explosive we had two down games. Maybe we can explore that. This game script against the Vikings was wonky. The Vikings are tough. They're 5-0 for a reason. The Jets had to do something different in the passing game. They're splitting up the carries between him and Braylon Allen. It's not that Brees Hall is bad, but now 9 carries, 23 yards, 19 carries in two games, and like less than 30 yards in two games. This could create a buying opportunity for you in fantasy football if you want to explore that, see if that happens. Maybe get rid of an RB2, a wide receiver that's producing that you got plenty of or something like that. Be a little bit creative because I'm not going to give you Brees Hall. But again, someone might because redraft is redraft and people are really over the moon on some of these players week to week and they're jumping the shark. We're only five weeks into the season and some players are already busts. Some players are already league winners when really in reality that some of these players are just going to regress back to the mean and be up and down and that's how the cookie's going to crumble here in the NFL. Brees Hall, the situation saying, hey, he could be up and down a little bit more, but also give you some of that upside. So that might be something you may want to explore in your leagues. Again, I'm not giving him away, but somebody watching this video might in your league, so you may want to explore that. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Make sure to hit that subscribe button on the way out. One thing for watching, catch you on the next video.